Live in Nashville, Tennessee. You are listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. Nashville's number one daily podcast. Brought to you by Think Nashville. Think Nashville. Think Brad. Think Brad. It's Nashville Daily Podcast. Hey, good morning, Nashville, and welcome to the Nashville Daily Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Brad Reynolds. If you're looking for real estate here in the Middle Tennessee market, make sure to visit thinkbrad.com. You can email him at brad at thinkbrad.com or 615-856-3270. Text him the longest hashtag possible about Belmont University. We're going to be talking about Belmont University with my friend Nick Truitt. Nick, welcome to the studio. Hi, Stuart. We've been talking about this for a while, getting me on here, but... yeah. It's now time. It is now time. I am so, I'm so glad you're joining me. Uh, so it's going to be more of a laid back conversation. Uh, we're going to talk about Belmont, maybe some Nashville food. Uh, we're also going to talk about NASCAR coming back to a Nashville and uh, maybe even the Grand Prix because there, there's a lot in that world that we can talk about. Uh, Nick, you've, you've been working with us for the last few months, and it's been a pleasure to get to know you over this time. And uh, you are now in the, the process of switching locations and you're relocating to a different part of the country and what, what's been your experience here in the city of nashville and what first off tell us who you are and then what brought you here so obviously i graduated last december from belmont um was here started in fall 2019 which is many many moons ago that, um, that's an interesting time to start college yes so you had one semester and a half and a half of all in person and then the pandemic happened. What was that experience like? It's different. It's very, um, I chose, you had the option, like most college students did, to come back on campus that er- er- initial fall of 2020. I did. I was one of the managers of the basketball team, so that was probably the only reason that kept me Okay. from that was my reason for coming back onto campus because f- for that, if it's not, I would have stayed home, back home in Georgia yeah, and so, saved that money. So... When the when the pandemic happened, when did the university shut down and switch completely to online classes and all that? They were on spring break. So initially, everybody did the whole, like, you know, we're going to wait it out two weeks. So they waited until after Easter. Okay. was That was their initial plan. So I think it was the second week of March, somewhere around there. And then they said, we'll come back after Easter break, which was going to be another break that we had. Uh-huh. And then right around the week before Easter, they said, yeah, we're just going to stay online for the rest of the semester. Okay. At at Belmont University, what 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 was your degree in? Multimedia production. So what does that look like? So this degree, which technically no longer exists, but because they kind of redid, restructured it a little bit, um, this, it's basically an all encompassing thing. It's kind of, it dabbles a little bit of audio, a little bit of video, a little bit of graphic design, which is not my strong suit, learned very quickly, but Just an all-encompassing degree. I got, you have to have a minor, so my minor was in sport and media as well. So that covered a little bit of sport production, a little bit of PR coverage, a little bit of everything involving the sport industry. Now, the multimedia production major is technically under the video production major as a specialty or a concentration where you can then get everything within the major just now as a concentration, but more focus is now on the video side of things which which makes sense that's, yeah. that's where the world's going is all, all of the video so fall of 2020 was it primarily online classes or was there in-person classes like what was that during that time frame like it was a weird system so like obviously people were being like you go know, we can't be close to each other so if you were in person there can only be a certain amount of people in the classroom so if you were on campus they kind of did like a rotation of like okay this five or six people can be on in class, but then other people were in Zoom. It's a whole, it was, it was interesting. People got through it. Yeah. That was mainly for that fall of the 2020. Um, spring was a little bit easier because a lot more people came back. And then that following fall, everybody, they were full on mostly back in person, but it was interesting. Teachers got through it. It wasn't ideal. It wasn't ideal for anyone. I did fine. I know other people didn't do fine. I can I'm kind of scrappy. I can figure it out and get things done. Do you feel you learned as well as everything? Like with the, that blended online mix, do you feel like you learned as much as you would have in person the following fall semester? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Um, I was still doing all my gen ed. So it was kind of, 
you know, your basic stuff because yeah, yeah. I waited how you're kind of supposed to kind of do with all your major stuff mm-hmm. your last two years, year and a half for me. So I think I did okay. Like, I, it would have been a lot better in person. I need, like, because I can get distracted like any person. You yeah, get distracted yeah. very easily yeah. just staring at a screen. So in person, I definitely enjoyed that a lot better. What, what's your thoughts on the brand new performing arts center at Belmont? I like it. I mean, for me personally, I feel like they kind of did, they built some stuff backwards in a way because it kind of affects. So as I mentioned earlier that I was a manager for the basketball team, our new athletic building is a, a block away. Is that the one that's on top of the hill in the back? Mm-hmm. Okay. So technically that should have been just how timelines worked and how money and donors, like they had that money. So they just went ahead and did it. And they were like, it's a poor, it's a performing arts center. So yeah, yeah. they have concerts coming in and all these different productions coming in. So they were trying to get that going as fast as possible. I would have liked it if they switched it because it would have made a lot of people in athletics lives easier, mm-hmm. but I have no problem with it. I've been to a couple of shows there. It's actually a very good place to hold a production or a um, concert venue. Okay. And Nick, you are, you are, you're a big NASCAR fan. Yes. And uh, that, that's one thing I've learned over the last little while with being with you. Uh, so what's your thoughts on NASCAR coming back and racing at the Nashville Fairground Speedway? So it's actually very interesting. You've talked about it on the podcast. Uh, Dale Jr. Mm-hmm. is kind of advocating for bringing back a lot of older speedways that kind of made NASCAR into what it was. Mm-hmm. So he's been on this project. You've covered it here that Bristol's stepping in to be like, hey, we'll front the money for it. And they're going to be the management of the, the fairground speedway. Exactly. So they're going to come in, renovate it, bring it up to 2023 20, NASCAR standards because it's got to have a lot redone there. Um, it, I feel like there won't be... Oh, actual points race there it will be like an all-star type race or an exhibition type race just trying to bring in a crowd and trying to make things interesting because it is such a small track they can't do a normal race weekend there they'll still have the trucks will still have a probably a points race there because they'll accompany it with something so it'll be a more engaging it won't be just a regular nascar race it'll be a little bit more of an experience than what a normal nascar race in weekend is like you we get at national super speedway out in lebanon what's the what's the difference between and you probably have you been to most of the racetracks nationwide no so i've only been to atlanta motor speedway talladega super speedway okay have you been to bristol i have not been to bristol that's a one on my checklist i want to go to okay so it's a short track track, tell tell me the difference and i i know this a little bit but tell me the difference between like a long track and a short track and then you also have street tracks correct so super speedways are your longer tracks your two technically over two miles um daytona and talladega you have to have a uh, restrictor plate on the engines because if you go that they'll go way too fast and insurance is not expensive Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's the, your super speedway. So Talladega is the longest oval track at 2.66 ish miles. Daytona's two and a half. Outside of that, Michigan is a two mile track. It's not classified as a super speedway because there's enough baking and they have to break enough to where okay. they don't need a um, need a restricted plate. Then NASCAR's bread and butter right now is half mile, a uh, one and a half mile tracks. So that's your intermediate style tracks. That's the majority of their schedule. Then their short tracks, your Bristol's, your Martinsville's, National Fairgrounds will be considered a short track. Mm-hmm. And then street racing where... Watkins um, Glen is the only one I know of. Watkins Glen, Sonoma, they just added um, Road America to their schedule. Circuit of the Americas out in Texas, and they just are going to do a street circuit out in Chicago this summer, starting this summer. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So what's the... You like NASCAR. <laughs> are you a fan of the Grand Prix? Yes. So with your thoughts of Nashville coming to, or the Grand Prix coming to Nashville, have you been able to attend a race here in downtown? I have not. And okay. that's one thing that hopefully I can get back once I do move, hopefully spend a weekend and come back and mm-hmm. experience it. I know I've driven by it during, while it's packed and like you can hear the cars on track and all that, but I never got to actually experience it here. And I thought it was a great race. The first year was kind of weird. Yeah, the the way the the turns and everything were in downtown, you're like, okay, they need to they need to fix some things, especially right by the finish line, because mm-hmm. like all those car accidents were happening right there. But it's the first race in the country that goes over a body of water, right? Uh, so th- that's a really interesting thing. Do you think Nashville will get Formula One at some point? 
No, because Formula One's now up to three races in the United States. Okay. They just added um, Las Vegas. Is it Las Vegas? What else is Miami it? Miami and Circuit of the Americas is what brought back okay. Formula One to the United States. I think it was 2014. I'm blanking on that number. But last year was the first year in Miami, and then they just signed like a 10-year contract deal with Las Vegas, the city of Las Vegas, to okay. have that race there. So we're up to three now. I don't imagine them adding any they might replace if they do mm-hmm. it would replace one of them if one of them do you think do you think the infrastructure of nashville can accommodate a formula one no not in its current form because nashville's not nashville formula one's basically a full-on experience you get yeah people travel to these things oh it's a massive it's one and of the biggest events in the world like i know at miami i think they said over three hundred thousand people were attended in all its former fashions and like you go to that you go to for the entire weekend it's not just mm-hmm. you show up on sunday for the race it's an entire weekend thing and they have support races for it and there's always something going on on track it's not just the ones that you see on espn it's the support teams and yeah, yeah. they'll I'm like combine it with other stuff but it's a full weekend experience and it's something i do one with, with the with ten. formula one how long of a like a track is it typically it's over two miles. I know the shortest one's roughly about two miles, but then they can go four miles. I think it's the longest. I want to say China has is the one of the longest ones, but it's okay. between two and four. Okay. And then the the other day you were in the studio. This was probably a month and a half ago. You were watching a twenty four hour race, and I was like, "What is a twenty four hour race?" So like, tell me, uh, do you think Nashville will ever get a twenty four hour race? No. <laughs> Again. Okay. Um, we have to fix our roads first because our roads I know are so terrible. That, that's the first part that I know that Formula One, not Formula One, and Formula One and IndyCar would have to go over. And they did that for IndyCar. They had to repave a lot to make sure that because those cars are very fragile to begin with. Like any sport car is fragile, so you hit one of those bumps, you tear up everything, and then your day's done, and it's nothing on your own. So, twenty four races are fun. It's three drivers, three or four drivers a lot of mechanical engineering smart people that way above my pay grade that figure out how to keep an engine running and for 24 hours without overheating Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so yeah that's an interesting concept so you you, your degree was a minor in sports uh media Mm -hmm. so what's your thoughts on the new titan stadium that's potentially coming into downtown nashville it's great I'm all for it. Coming from Atlanta, they built Mercedes-Benz to bring back the Super Bowl, and I know that's Nashville's ultimate goal is to bring back the Super Bowl. I believe they have the capability to hold a Super Bowl here with just you have Broadway right there. You have attractions everywhere to bring people in and keep people here for the Super Bowl week that is in full-on experience. So I'm happy for it. They just need to get it done because every time you keep pushing the bag is a year later, the Nashville – Guess sport and sport authority Sports can authority yep. can submit their proposal to the NFL and saying, "Hey, we're ready to host." The Super but the Bowl. stadium has to be either almost fully built or has to be operational for a season or two. I don't know exactly. I think what it is is that you can propose it, and you got to have like a solid timeline. So us being in the planning phase right now is not a good like um, bargaining tool. Like they yeah, have yeah. to either like start construction and then be like, "Okay, this is when." the stadium's going to be done, and then they can base that off of when they want to place the Super Bowl there. Do you think Nashville will have a Super Bowl before 2030? It's possible. Or do you think 2030 would be the year of the Super Bowl? 2030, I forget how far out they plan out the Super Bowl. So I think it's five years, and they try to keep that ball rolling. But I think 2030 should be a good goal to have mm-hmm. kind of like roll into that new decade. If not, early 2030s should be there priority to get it in yeah so right now if if the stadium is approved over the next few months the estimate that the first game would be in the 27 season uh 2027 um so we may i doubt we'll get a super bowl the first year that the stadium existed because atlanta didn't get a super bowl it was about two years years, it was two two, three years three years after um and i think the same thing with minnesota uh so It's really interesting. The architecture, there's a lot of debate around the architecture of the new Titan Stadium. 
it looks like a building like fifth and broad mm-hmm. and the Tennessee and brought this up is a really good article. And they talked about how some of these other stadiums look very futuristic. Like they're, they're, they're here for the future. So, and I know architecture is not really your thing, but what's your thoughts just on the design of the Titan stadium? I know they're trying to go, they're kind of copying a, the SoFi stadium out in uh, Los Angeles with that open air concept where it's technically a dome, but also still have that open air on one side of the end zones. I like it. I like, um, I know Atlanta was the one that has the cool, that it has the cool, like, um, opening of the, um, yeah, of the, the dome, dome yeah. up at the top. It, it's something that's kind of different. It doesn't just, it's not like at t Stadium in Dallas where mm-hmm. it just opens up to the sides, kind of does the little rotational yeah, yeah. octagon. It, it looks like a, it looks like, um, a lens for a, a camera. Right. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. So the Nashville stars are a, organization here in town that's trying to get a major league baseball team here to Nashville. Do you think major league baseball is a thing that will come to Nashville? It's possible you're breaking up a lot of fan bases in the process of it. Cause I know here in Tennessee, kind of South Carolina, North Carolina area, you have a combination of Braves fans, a little bit of Cincinnati Reds fans, Cleveland guardians fans, Cubs fans, White Sox fans. It's kind of a hodgepodge mixture. I know a lot of people were very excited in 2021 when the um, when the Braves won, and that was kind of like the popular thing here. So you're breaking up a lot of um, fan bases, but I'm I would be fully down for a MLB team here. Okay, um, yeah, I think it, it, it's interesting. I think you were with us when we talked about the potential real or the studies that they're doing towards TSU. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you think the stadium, and I, I think downtown is completely out of, out of the, the realm for a major league baseball stadium. Right. I think it most likely will happen towards TSU. If not, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens more towards Wilson County. Uh, where, where do you think the perfect stadium would be for a major league baseball town uh, for, for a major, major league baseball team here in Nashville? Somewhere where they can build up, a good food scene attraction scene around it a lot of people saw a lot of people criticized but then saw the upsides of when atlanta the atlanta braves moved from their downtown location basically out to the suburbs and people were like criticizing it i was one of them too it's like why would you move outside of atlanta and then when they built up the batteries what it's called around it 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 makes sense, and yeah. they've they've made it work. And there's also there's also a train station there, right? Yes, there's a martyr train station there yeah. that they built up infrastructure around it to where traffic wasn't isn't the number one problem in a way. Mm-hmm. They they kind of they, they they made it to where you can get to it easily. Parking's still expensive and kind of all over the place because of the battery being right around it. The yeah. park actual parking lots are farther away yeah, yeah. than what they were originally, but. Still, you can go. So you could, you can, after a game, you can go at, eat at a restaurant. You could, you could do things so you're not sitting in traffic immediately after the game. Right. And I know people that go three, four hours before they tailgate there. They've, they, uh, the Braves built a little plaza there where they hold pregame events and stuff like that. So they've made it a full on community thing. So out there by TSU would be, there's a lot of space there. And then you, there's areas there that you can build it up around to where you can have a, all-encompassing type deal. Yeah. So recently, Nick, you've been looking for a job all throughout the country for through different organizations and whatnot. What was your experience like here in Nashville being a recent college graduate and uh, employment here in town? So I've always said and got told in a way that applying, not graduating at the traditional springtime graduation was always going to be a little bit more difficult because you're also applying at the end of the year but it's a lot tighter or they're just, we're not hiring for the end of the year. So I kind of knew that going in, but still thought there was always a chance. It's hard. Um, There was a lot of my experience with the job market was that there was a lot of like, didn't even hear back from people, you know, even if I did apply, there's a lot of automated, automated systems. It's 2023. You're going to get automated systems, but you know, there's not really a like, Hey, we, we got it. And then people taking months and months of time to respond back to you to even get to the interview process and even start that. So I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to <laughs> fix that issue. And because people like me that are planners trying to be like, hey, I want this done yeah, and yeah. Get, get everything sorted and figured out. Yeah, it doesn't help us planner planning people. 
Yeah, yeah. It's it's an interesting uh, place to be in as an employer, and it's an interesting place to see what's happening from an economic standpoint. Uh, a lot of companies right now are are pausing hiring. Uh, a lot of companies are also laying off, and, and so it's just it's a really interesting thing to watch. Um, and I know that's been a headache for you. Thankfully, you, you you got a job. You're moving you're moving out of town next week. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, we're we're going to miss you here. But Nick, what, what's one of your favorite neighborhoods in Nashville uh, to hang out in? So I always kind of stayed within the um, Belmont region. Sadly, you know being that college student. It, it's it, it's interesting. So it feels like, and I don't know if this was the case during the pandemic, Belmont students get in and out of Nashville way more often than Vanderbilt students. Vanderbilt students seem to, they, they, they seem to really isolate themselves strictly at Vanderbilt. So at your time at Belmont, were you able to explore a lot of the neighborhoods? Were you getting out a lot? I know you were managing the basketball team, so you had to be probably at all the basketball games yeah. and all of these things. But what was that time frame like? It was interesting, you know, because especially when times when, you know, we were especially testing for basketball teams where, where all athletics was pretty high. We couldn't do much per se. Um, but we were like, you know, I, I always kind of like to drive around like, that's my way of like clearing my head. So I would drive around Bell Mead, like go as far south as I could on 12 South, get by Lipscomb. I always drove by Brentwood to see all the nice houses that I can never afford in, ever in my life, but, and just to see and explore. So I always kind of stayed kind of, what is that? Southwest. Southwest Na- of Nashville, yeah. Nashville, explored out a little bit towards the Charlotte area, TSU, the nation's a little bit because I had a buddy that lived in the nations that had mm-hmm. an apartment there. So I would go out there a little bit. So, sort of west of Nashville, I guess okay. you would say, is was my primarily where I hung out and stayed around. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know a lot of Belmont students, um, they go to a lot of the music venues. But with you and your background in athletics, uh, were you at a lot of music venues in town? Not really. <laughs> okay. Um, there was, it's always a weird thing between athletics because most of the time, particularly the basketball your baseballs, they're coming specifically for that sport. Yep. So it's kind of weird that they're kind of getting introduced to the music scene because, yeah, again, yeah. Belmont's a, it's a music school music school yeah. at heart. So you have all the music kids there, but then athletics is kind of like, hey, we kind of want to see piece. it. Yeah, exactly. But now the new president's kind of, um, he comes from a larger school in a okay. way. So he's changed some things around. I won't say it on air, but like he's kind of changed some things around to where athletics is kind of, can kind of be both and they both can help each other in a way. Yeah. I know recently Belmont has, uh, they're, they're building a medical school. If I remember correctly, they also recently started a law school within the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so Belmont is trying to really get into some positions that other universities in middle Tennessee have been in for a long time. What do you think the draw is to Belmont university? Just other than the music, just kind of the culture kind of, it's a very, it's a small school. I know I was kind of, I came from a small high school, so still someone that wasn't wanting to go to like a Vanderbilt, your big SEC schools mm-hmm. in a way, or stay within the state of Georgia where there were larger schools. I still kind of wanted to know, still have like community with not only the students, but like know my professors, like be able to talk to them, be able to actually like know them and have that like almost personable relationship. That's kind of what I wanted when I was looking for schools. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes that makes complete sense. I, I wanted the same thing. I went to a very small school of five hundred people, yeah. like super small school. I had a class in college. It was the professor, myself, and one other student. So Fridays we would our class, our Friday class, we would go eat breakfast either at his house or at a diner every Friday. That was our class. Like at maximum, I think the most I had in a class was maybe twenty. Okay, like especially once you get to like your major like yeah. production style stuff, it was like less than ten because okay. just equipment and all that stuff is limited so yeah, yeah. You, you can only have a certain amount of people but again you know people in your major you see all the same people in your classes it's like so it's kind of just like you kind of know people and you have connections going on outside of belmont yeah nick what's one piece of advice you would give our audience uh you've been working with us for a few months what's what what's one piece of advice you'll give our audience just on anything just on, and on nascar whatever you want for the graduating students, apply early, but always still have that open mind, you know, be ready to move. I'm not a person that likes change, but I'm willing to 
take the step where I am going and it's just, I'm happy about it. It's my a kind of a dream deal. So it's, I'm happy about it. Dream big, always dream big. That's what my mom always told me. My dad always told me to continue to dream big. That's awesome. Nick, thank you so much for joining us on the show. We hope that your journey to where you're going next is incredible and that you have a great time there. Uh, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com to learn more about the city of Nashville. Also, subscribe to our other YouTube channels, Explore.Nash and Explore Tennessee. And if you want to learn more about Nashville, head over to ExploreTours.com to take an in-person tour with us. We hope that you guys have an incredible weekend, and we'll see you guys next week. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.